Hey Les Brown, Steven Munson here, Aloha from Hawaii. I wanted to make this quick video for you to give you an idea who I was and why I was making this video and asking you to help me and coach me and guide me and mentor me to become a better speaker, a better presenter. And so I wanted to make this video so you can know who I was and then when you're going to dedicate your time to me, you have an idea why you're doing it and also for you to be able to hear briefly my story, how I got here today, because you're gonna love it. You're gonna love why I'm here and why I'm doing this. I'll tell you that right now. So let's do this. Before we get started, if you could, just real quick, if you could repeat after me. And let's go ahead and do this. Say, I believe, I believe that this will be an epic journey. Did you say it? I believe that this will be an epic journey. Now the reason I did that is obvious. That's what you do. Now I might not do it very well, but I'll tell you this, that's the first time I ever did it. And I listened to you and I thought about things when I heard you present. And in fact, I felt like it was the most moving and compelling two hours I've ever heard from anyone. And I've sat in the front row of Tony Robbins. I've heard them all. He's incredible. There's some incredible leaders and speakers and motivators. But you had just survived something of a different level of struggle than I believe that you normally knew. And it came through. We all had the great opportunity to ask a question to you in Hawaii with Vic Strize's Big Idea Mastermind Retreat. When I got up there, I asked the question to you and I said, uh, Les, what would I need to do to become a better speaker, a better presenter, a better communicator? And you said simply to hire a coach, to get a coach, to get somebody to help you. And at the very end I said, God willing, you will be my mentor. I walked away and smiled. And I, like most foolish people, asked this question that we think is the question, which isn't the question. The question was never asked. We all know that ask and it is given. Seek and you shall find. I sat down in that room and I listened to you for the next couple hours answer questions with incredible people from across the world. But most of the time I sat there wondering why I didn't ask the right question and how I was going to ask the right question because the coordinators of the event already told us to only ask one question. And of course, I don't want to step on anyone's toes as Vic had lined it up. So I'm sitting there full of passion, full of excitement, full of fear and confusion and frustration. I want to ask the question, but I'm not going to go ahead and step on anyone's toes. As the door opened, the doors that happened to be opening for me a lot, and I believe that God gave me that ultimate chance. As you last then said, does anyone else have any other questions? I was sitting there Indian style on the very floor in the front row with my camera that I just got, the one I'm making this video with. And my hand went flying in the air. And he said, you sir, have another question. I believe I did. As I opened my mouth, the words barely came out. Part of me was scared to ask the question. The part of me that wanted to give up. The part of me that didn't want to live up to my purpose in life. That little part of me that sometimes take over who we are. Isaiah 58.10, feed the hungry and help those in trouble, then your light will shine out from darkness and the darkness around you will be bright as the noon. That's just something I wrote down. Les, I asked you, or I said this exactly. God wants you to mentor me how do I get started? And you looked over at Vic and you kind of laughed and said, what did a, uh, how did you like how he just used those words to put the responsibility on me? I don't know if that's what I was trying to do. I don't know what I was trying to do. I do know what I wanted, 
and I do know what I'm here for. I believe that God put me in this world not to make me struggle, because I had my fair share of it. And I'll share with you in just a moment exactly the struggle it took to get here, because you're going to believe that this is someone that you want to help. And I know that. You're going to want to help me as much as I want the help. You're going to be called to help me as much as I'm being called to ask you for the help. I ran around with a lot of passion in my life, and until I knew my purpose, I was just lost. I've done over 500 webinars, Google Hangouts, live presentations online to over 50,000 people collectively over the course of the last four years. I do have the ability to communicate with people, and I do have ears and eyes that are looking at me. And I do have a message, and I do have a calling, and I do have a purpose, and I do have passion. And what I'm looking for from you is a little bit of guidance, some mentoring, some coaching, and I want you to put me not only on the right track, but I want you to put me on the front of that track instead of the back of that track looking at myself. I wish I could be there. I wish I could do that. I know I should be doing this. I know I should be doing that because all those things are within me right now, and they're looking to come out. Les Brown. Will you help me? Will you help me become a better communicator so when I communicate with people, they can hear the words that God wants them to hear? Not my struggles, not my worries, not my fears. The words that God wants them to hear. I'm just a vessel looking to serve. And yes, I'm scared. I'm nervous about it. Who would it be? I've had this Bible longer than anything I've owned in my life, and it's not very old. I actually got it from my Bible teacher in 2001. He gave it to me right after my brother Ryan died, because he knew how I was doing. He saw how lost I was. My brother died when I was 20 from a drug overdose. He was found dead on my mom's couch in her condo in Cocoa Beach, Florida. When I heard the news, I didn't believe it at first, and then it just... I went into a place of I want to let everyone cry on my shoulder so I don't have to be the one crying on there. So I became that person. I let my mom die, cry on my shoulders, or my, my dad cry on my shoulders, or my brother, or my friends, anybody cry on my shoulders, to the point where I just forgot how to cry. And emotionally, over the next four years, I went into the hardest business on the planet, the hospitality industry, and I was running a successful bar and restaurant in Cocoa Beach, Florida. From when I was 20 years to 24 years old, I lost 14 close friends, not random associate buddies, close friends, people that I spent all my time with, to drug overdoses, tragic accidents, and things that just didn't seem to be real and never seemed to end. When I was 24 years old, I had sold the restaurant and bar for $650,000. Over the next few years, I had lost everything in the stock market, the real estate market, and things that I don't even believe that are important enough to bring up to bore you. But I do know this, when I was 32 years old, I basically had nothing. I was starting over. 15 years of drug addiction, 15 years of emotional struggle as an entrepreneur, and I had nothing to show for. I went from Greyhound bus to Greyhound bus to find my way to my dad's couch in Cocoa Beach, Florida. And I swept the floors and I did con construction work and landscaping and I, I put together boxes and I just did anything to get a few dollars. As my dad dropped me off at a Greyhound bus in Orlando with $360, I made my way to Atlanta where I was going to go back to living in this basement of my buddy's dad's house to get a job at a fitness center when I took a leap of faith. And I did something that may sound really easy, but it's not. I went on a one-way ticket to Hawaii because my mom really just kept telling me I gotta do it. She had that mother's intuition. And so I just said, hey, it's Hawaii. How bad could it be? I'll go to Hawaii flat broke and I'll walk around and maybe I'll jump in the ocean and I'll, I'll 
eat some fruits or just sit underneath a palm tree or something. And I brought this thing right here next to me, a Bible and a laptop. That's about all I had. That's all I needed. More than I needed. I started over less. And I had to shed all this pain. And I turned it into power. And now I have a lot of people looking at me. I got a lot of people wondering what I'm going to do next. And so I'm here to ask you to mold me and guide me and show me, and give me courage. Although I probably won't need too much, I seem to have a lot within me. Passion is our unique gifting and aptitude or opportunity that makes us come alive as God's purpose was for our life. I have so much passion less. I have so much purpose in this world. I just need a little bit of guidance. I'm willing to do anything it takes. I was actually very excited when your son responded to me after my only second email. Because in my mind, I was already prepared to write a hundred or more in a row. I was going to send videos and I was going to send emails with scripts and anything possible to get your attention. I want to say thank you to Vic who made this possible so you could just be able to hear my voice. And I didn't want to give you some long drawn out story, but I wanted you to see the ability that I have right now, raw talent, which might not be very talentful, to communicate with you. Because I know a little bit. I just want to know a lot. I want to be able to help anybody. I want to be able to communicate and turn all this struggle, all this bottled up fear and pain into ultimate power that is ultimate success for somebody so they can hear what my message is. Clearly. Not through my words, but through the words of God. Les Brown, I challenge you. This will be your greatest challenge in life. Not because it'll be the hardest, but I believe that you will sit back and you're going to look back at this video in this moment and say, yeah, I knew it. I had this feeling about this guy, so I just started doing it. I want to take that stage. I want to fill those shoes. I have a long way to go to even moderately be able to stand on the same stage as you, sir. Open your life to me. I know the importance of it, and I have a feeling that you know the importance of it a little bit better than I do, and I just want to share this with you. I open the Bible here to Matthew 13, and it speaks about how Matthew 13 verse 58 and he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith and then it goes on to talk about Jesus feeds the 5,000 people and about taking courage and not being afraid and to have enough faith to move mountains I have that faith Les I want to move mountains I do not want to live anymore to for my selfish reasons I want to explode I want to flourish I want to shed this light that so many people in the darkness don't know where it is they can't find it I live there I don't want anyone else to live there any longer as long as I'm alive I want to create miracles and God puts together people in this world to create miracles and I haven't had that big moment because I wasn't ready for it God's delays are not God's denials Les, would you help me? Enjoy this journey with me. Let's create miracles together. Let's help people together. I don't ever expect for you to do something for me that I don't deserve. But I deserve this. I want this. And as I said before, I believe that God wants this too. I've had many times that 
words came to me and experiences happened. I've had divine transformations. Things I'm writing a book about. How I was homeless and I moved to Hawaii. All those things mean absolutely nothing if I don't live with courage. I'm courageously asking you once again, how do I begin? How do I get started? How do I work with you? How do I follow you? How do I walk with you? How do I learn from you? How do I get guidance from you? What is the best way to do it? We can get on Skype, we can get on the phone call, we can do a Google Hangout together. I'll fly to wherever you're at. You can come over here and hang out in Hawaii. And I don't have an incredible ton. I mean, I would imagine to hire you for one minute is more than the money that I have. You deserve more than the money that I have for one minute of your time, and I know that. So part of you is going to have to make an investment in me and what I'm saying, and you're going to have to believe it on some small scale that what I'm holding here, what I'm saying to you is true. I carried around this book since the basement of Atlanta and I did not know. I did not look in it. I did not open it except for one time and I must have opened it to a page that had something inside of me because when I was going through and I was asking you a question on the floor, it says right here on page 33, Taking On Life. I believe if you keep on coming back again and again and if you are willing to ask for the help and keep asking until you get it, then life will give you what you want. I will continue to ask. I am here to stay. Today is the dawn of a new day, Les. Thank you for taking this time. And I know this was maybe a little bit longer than you hoped to sit in front and watch somebody you don't even know. But I want you to see my ability to communicate. I wanted to see you to see where my passion comes from, my struggle was, how I got to this condo here on the beach in Waikiki and living my dreams as an internet marketer, helping hundreds of people across the world have breakthroughs every day. I want to grow from there. I want to contribute and I want to give things that most people don't know that they have. I want to give the things in my life that I know that I have for the greater good of this world. Les Brown? I'll see you soon.